He was the man who introduced the world to the king, Sam Phillips, and his Sun Records label discovered some of the biggest artists of all time, including Johnny Cash, Jerry Lee Lewis, Howlin' Wolf, and Ike Turner, and changed music forever. Now, a new biography, Sam Phillips, the man who invented rock and roll, sheds light on the man behind countless hit songs. Joining us now is its critically acclaimed author, Peter Goralnik. Peter, good morning. Well, thanks. Good to be here. You've, you've written definitive biographies of Elvis and of Sam Cooke, but y you say in the preface to this that this was really a book written out of admiration and love. Well, that's true, although so were the books about Elvis and Sam Cooke. I've never written about anybody for whom I didn't have admiration. I've never written anything on assignment. So I'm, I'm not making that as a boast. It's hard right. to do sometimes. But, but uh, you were friend, You were actually friends with Sam for 25 years. Well, yeah. I, I mean, I met him in, in 79 after 10 years of trying to get an interview. He wasn't doing any interviews at that point because he didn't believe, he thought doing an interview meant you were looking backwards and he always wanted to look forward. Now, by within 10 or 12 years, you might say that we had become friendly and maybe within 20 years we were friends. <laughs> but as Sam said to me, he said, you know, uh, my son Knox loved you from the time, you know, from the very beginning, but I didn't. <laughs> he, he felt you ought to keep, you know, you have to keep your distance. If you don't keep your distance, they'll push you off the cliff. And right. he, he was very diplomatic about it. He said, I know you, you weren't sure about me. Right. And that, you know, that was the reason he kept his distance. Well, I wasn't sure about him from the minute I met him. I was sure about him, but I, I appreciated that, uh, mm -hmm. that eventually. Uh, but it, was, it made it a very different experience writing. You're right. Yeah. We, knew, we heard him speaking about Elvis Presley in the clip, and what I thought was so interesting about the book is I thought we were going to learn so much about what a talent he was as soon as he came into the studio. And it, the book paints a very different picture of Elvis Presley. Well, Elvis was like everybody who uh, recorded for Sam in some ways, was not, not an inspired amateur. He was somebody driven by an ambition, by a musical ambition. He was a conscious, creative artist, but that, that, uh, the form that that art was, uh, was going to take had not become clear when he came in. But for Sam, it wasn't a question of looking for stars. I mean, he would have been content. The person that he considered the most profound artist that he ever recorded was Howlin' Wolf, who came into the studio in 51 after Sam heard him on a, on a bad radio broadcast. And listening to it, he said, I said to myself, this is it. This is where the soul of man never dies. And that's what Sam was looking for in all of the, his recordings. He wasn't interested in building a catalog. He, he, wasn't interested, uh, he, wa he wasn't interested in the money aspect of it in particular. He, did, he liked money, but he wasn't. <laughs> but he, was, he wanted... He was looking for something unique. He was looking for somebody who had uh, individualism, as he said, in the extreme. And yeah. uh, with Elvis, he, fo he found somebody who had a voice that hadn't, he hadn't found his voice yet, but he heard something absolutely unique. And, he, and Sam wanted to draw out of you, you know, whoever it was, us, any mm -hmm. of us, what was in us, whether or not we saw it in ourselves. I think when history also looks at him, especially through the eyes of your book, you get a sense of how he felt music was a democracy, that every race should be allowed to perform, and he saw that talent. But what's your view when you think of how the world remembers him? Well, I don't know how the world remembers him, but I'll go along with what you said. His, <laughs> his goal from the very beginning, long before he started the studio, his, his, the philosophical framework into which he, he put the music that he was going to record. First of all, he was going to record African-American music and give voice to people who had not been given a voice. Later on, he recorded poor whites who, similar, who he felt were similarly uh, needed to express themselves and were not given either respect or even recognized. But uh, he, uh, his, his vision of music, was it was totally a democratic vision. And it was the, with the idea that, you know, music could conquer all. I mean, he would say, he, sometimes he would say it could stop wars, and I don't want to go that far. But he believed that once the mainstream audience, once a white audience, that would be a way of putting it, heard the music, there, was, there would be no way they could turn away from it. It would essentially would, it would bring down the walls of segregation, which were as firm in music as they were in every other aspect of society. And that's what he set out to do. And, you know, I think he felt that he achieved it. So and how pivotal, Peter, w then would you say Sam Phillips' role was? I think he was a revolutionary and, he, you know, he was, a, he was as much a conscious creative artist as any of the artists he had in the studio, except maybe Hol Howlin' Wolf. I mean, you know, it's hard to beat where the soul of man never dies. Yeah. But, uh, no, I, I feel like, you know, his prophecy came true. I mean, it wasn't because of Elvis, it wasn't just because of Sam Phillips, it wasn't just because of Elvis, but in essence, the early days of rock and roll were a real strike in the fight against segregation. They brought black and white audiences together. 
They brought, uh, they had people listening to music once Elvis, not just Elvis, but uh, others in the wake of Elvis broke through. Then all of a sudden, Ray Charles, uh, uh, Sam Cooke, Little Richard, Bo Diddley, Chuck Berry became not R&B stars, they became pop stars and they became, you know, the foundation for the music as Sam felt they should be. I know he once said to you, just put me in the focus that I'm supposed to be in, and I think you did a wonderful job with it. Well, thanks. Thanks. He said, ferret out the BS. There's too much of that around. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Peter Growlick, thanks very much for joining us. Sam Phillips, the man who invented rock and roll, is available now.